Hello guys, welcome back to Dr. Arshin Nadeem Awan ultrasound and radiology teaching videos. I do hope you will be all right and you will be enjoying your life. As you know that I'm on the course of musculoskeletal radiology including x-ray, CT scan, scintigraphy and uh, many of the diseases I have already been covered. Today my topic of uh, discussion is enchondroma. Enchondroma or chondroma uh, this is actually a benign tumor having chondroid max matrix, mature hyaline cartilage and uh, usually seen in the small bones, in the tubular bones of the hand and feet and also can be seen in the tibia and fabula. So far its age is concerned, it may vary, it um, can be seen in uh, 10 to 80 years of life. Uh, so far the presentation and the location of this uh, lesion is concerned can be metaphysial and diaphysial location. Uh, normally we perform the conventional x-ray. Conventional x-ray is one of the very important uh, modality to find all these musculoskeletal tumors. Uh, on the x-ray it may appear as a lytic well-defined lytic oval or round lesion. As I mentioned the location may be metaphysial or diaphysial or metadiaphysial. Uh, you may appreciate uh, scalloping margins or sclerotic margin. They will be either narrow zone of trans uh, transition or sclerotic zone of transition. So uh, these appearance will be uh, associated with the chondroid matrix, maybe popcorn calcification. On the scintigraphy, there will be no uptake. There are certain uh, home take points relating to enchondroma and it must be uh, kept in mind that uh, large enchondroma can be difficult to differentiate from grade 1 chondrosarcoma. So if the if, if the enchondroma is more than 6 to uh, 5 to 6 cm so you may suggest chondrosarcoma or if uh, there is uh, end scalloping or deep end scalloping. So what is the criteria for the deep end scalloping? If deep end scalloping is more than uh, the thickness, uh, two third thickness of the cortex, so this would be suggestive of uh, carcinoma or if it is, uh, the scalloping is uh, more than two third of the length of the lesion, this would also be considered as a, a malignant potential. Beside this, uh, you must look for the calcification. There will be either ring or arc calcification, maybe punctate calcification or maybe flocculent calcification. Beside this, there is another entity which is called as enchondroma protuberance. Uh, this would be uh, having mean outpouching of the enchondromas from the long bones, especially from the long bones. So far two other entities are concerned. One is called as Ollier disease. Ollier disease is a disease where you can find multiple enchondromas and, the, in, uh, and the, in, in this Ollier disease there is a great chance of uh, uh, malignant transformation. And the second is a Mephusi syndrome or Mephusi disease. In Mephusi disease there will be multiple enchondromas but associated with uh, flebolates. Uh, you can call it uh, hemangiomas of the uh, soft tissues which is considered as a flebolates. So if flebolates in the soft tissues are there and there are multiple enchondromas, this would be considered as Mephusi syndrome. Uh, how it will appear on the ultrasound imaging, how we will appreciate uh, not on the ultrasound imaging but on the x-rays and how they will be scintigraphy and CT scan. Let's start watching these videos. Chondroma is a benign intramedullary neoplasm and uh, it consists of mature hyaline cartilage. That's why they will be chondroid matrix. There are three types of matrix, osseous matrix, uh, chondroid matrix and fibrous matrix. So far this uh, enchondroma is concerned, it do have a hyaline cartilage and it do have a chondroid matrix. The one important uh, point is it can convert to chondroblastoma so it must be kept in mind that it convert into cancerous condition so far its location is concerned it usually seen in the tubular bones of the hand and feet uh, from 40 to 60 or even 65 percent it also involves the long bone in up to 25 percent and particularly femur is the area and tibia 
uh, is also involved usually metaphyseal or diaphyseal in location humerus comes to the next so these are all the long bones uh, where you can see enchondroma and uh, as i mentioned it has the potential to convert into chondrosarcoma briefly talk about the clinical uh, findings or clinical history uh, it is normally uh, an incidental finding and you may come across incidentally while uh, reporting the x-rays unless if there is pathological fracture if there is pathological fracture it will um, cause pain uh, but if there is a pain and there is no fracture so it potentially be malignant so therefore this is one of the very important point you must keep in mind and so for the age is concerned it usually can be seen in 10 to 8 years of life here on this slide illustration has been shown for the enchondroma beside this there are certain uh, two x-rays images uh, which shows a well-defined oval to some extent lobulated and eccentric lytic lesion this is what the characteristic of the enchondroma is it will appear a well-defined lobulated extent uh, uh, it will be uh, causing cortical expansion and um, usually they will be as i mentioned they will be a chondrite matrix so it will appear as a popcorn here you can appreciate in these two uh, x-ray images so far the overlying cortex uh, is concerned it may be thin in few cases it may be scalloped uh, they will be narrow or sclerotic zone of transition while on the above mentioned um, cases you can't uh, clearly see the sclerotic margin but there will be no periosteal reaction until unless there is fracture if there is fracture there will be periosteal reaction but in normal in chondroma there will be no pre periosteal reaction patient has already been discussed but simply 50 percent occurs in hand and feet some uh, uh, researchers educate for 40 to 65 percent long bone can also be involved proximal humerus proximal and distal femur proximal tibia and it would be a geographically central location or in some cases they will be eccentric but in small bone usually it will be central and uh, they will be scaloping and there is some other criteria which we will discuss later on that on the basis of certain three points you can continue uh, thinking of malignant transformation so this we will discuss in the next slides here on this uh, image the matrix mineralization has been shown look for the osteochondroma and look for the uh, enchondroma so these both having a chondrite matrix so for the images concerned it is not quite clear but uh, in the lucent lesion you can appreciate specks of calcification this calcification may be of popcorn type may be of flocculin or sometimes maybe of dot type so these three types of matrix mineralization can be seen in in chondroma here for better understanding of the chondroid matrix on the x-rays and on the ct ct on the ct it's quite clearly visible and you can appreciate the chondroid matrix on the mr images still uh, this shows uh, hyper uh, signals so increase uh, signal intensity while in the lower you can also appreciate chondroid matrix uh, there happens to be of a flocculent type there happens to be a nodular type so this is what the chondrite matrix will appear in these tumors this slide is just to show you a distinguish and differentiation that in bone infarct there will also be a class calcification but this calcification would be a serpiginous, uh, serpiginous type uh, it is a classical pattern of the intramedullary bone infarct uh, but uh, so far punctate calcifications are concerned it is also possible that you might have punctate calcification in bone infarct as well as you can appreciate in the enchondromas so this is one another just for the differentiation purpose i have shown the slide enchondroma protuberance is an another uh, separate entity which will appear uh, like there will be a multiple or uh, maybe a unilateral or uh, it depends upon case to case uh, there will be an enchondroma which will be protruding out uh, from the bone margins and uh, within the soft tissues so this would be a classical case here on these you can appreciate in the uh, middle interphalanges uh, or uh, middle phalanx you can appreciate these well-defined 
uh, and chondroma but these are projecting out from the cortical margin of the bone. disease is a disease when you can appreciate uh, multiple uh, enchondromas uh, within the bone if there is multiple enchondromas especially involving hand and other joints as well but it spares skull and spine and uh, disease is actually dysplastic disease and there is not simple multiple enchondromas but in general practice uh, we can appreciate that there will be a multiple enchondromas and there is increased risk of malignant degenerative transformation. Here on this x-ray images you can appreciate all your disease. Uh, there is a multiple enchondromas. Some of them is um, enchondroma protuberance extending out of the cortical margin. Cortical expansion is there. Uh, it's a particularly predominantly lytic lesion and there is central chondrite matrix as well. Mostly hands is involved on the upper illustration there is a uh, tibia is also involved so this is the example of the earlier disease another characteristic associated with enchondroma is mafusi syndrome and mafusi syndrome what happen is multiple enchondroma which would be associated with the soft tissue masses most commonly hemangiomas these hemangiomas distinguish this condition from the earlier disease. Earlier disease does not have uh, hemangiomas, but in Mufusi syndrome, there will be soft tissue masses and mainly there will be hemangiomas. So then it would be termed as Mufusi syndrome with multiple enchondromas and hemangioma. Here on this image, you can appreciate this is a Mufusi syndrome. Multiple enchondromas are there, but in the soft tissue, you can appreciate uh, uh, calcified uh, hemangiomas uh, within the soft tissue so this is the characteristic of the Mufusi syndrome and this is making it uh, uh, distinguishable from the earlier disease in earlier disease there will be no hemangiomas but in Mufusi syndrome there will be multiple enchondroma associated with soft tissue masses having hemangiomas This is the characteristic of uh, enchondroma that there will be no increase uptake. So on the basis of scintigraphy, we cannot exactly say for clear, uh, but there will be mainly no increase uptake on the scintigraphy. So scintigraphy to some extent is not very helpful in finding the enchondromas because there will be no tracer uptake. So you cannot exactly say anything on the ground of the um, especially scintigraphy. So scintigraphy will show no increased uptake. Few take home points are the large enchondroma and grade 1 chondrosarcoma is difficult to distinguish because, uh, because of the size. The only changes is size. If it is increased more than 5 to 6 centimeter enchondroma if increase more than 5 to 6 centimeter so then there is likely possibility of uh, cancer transformation and the second thing is if there is any deep endosteal scalloping so it shows uh, malignant transformation so far the um, scalloping criteria is concerned if it is two-third of the cortical thickness so it's mean it is malignant transformation or in other words if it is two-third of the length of the lesion so then you can think of malignant transformation. So the first criteria is the size if it is more than 5 to 6 centimeter. And the second criteria is scalloping criteria. If it is two third of the cortical thickness or if it is two third of the length of the lesion, it would be considered as malignant. As far as the pattern of the chondrite calcification is concerned, it may appear as a ring and arc. As I mentioned earlier, this would be a lytic lesion, but there will be a chondrite calcification. The chondrite calcification pattern would be the ring or arc type or uh, it might appear as a punctate. So punctate means if there is multiple dots so uh, it would be called as a punctate calcification or it may be flocculent. Flocculent means if it appears as a tufts of, tufts of wool so that would be called as flocculent uh, 
uh, calcification so these contract pattern uh, is for the uh, end chondroma and you may come across either punctate calcification or either arc and ring calcification or either uh, they may be flocculent calcifications Yes, guys, this was all about the inchondroma and the points related to inchondroma has been discussed at length that this is a benign tumor. It contains mature hyaline cartilage. It usually involves the tubular bones of the hand and feet and it also involves the long bone, especially femur and tibia. Uh, normally, it is, a, uh, it is an incidental finding unless there is a pathological fracture. If there is fracture, there will be a pain and you might pick the enchondroma. Beside this, we have also discussed at length about the uh, X-ray uh, presentations, about the CT scan presentation, and how it will behave on the uh, CT centi uh, on the centigraphy on nuclear medicine. Uh, beside this, a very important point, uh, home take point, you must have uh, you might have noticed that that if there is increase in size, there is a chance of converting into chondrosarcoma. Uh, and especially uh, you might have noticed the scalloping criteria uh, which is like if it is uh, a two third of the thickness of the cortex or if it is two third uh, increase at two third of the length of the lesion. So this is the scalloping criteria. Uh, you might have also noticed about the calcification. There may be uh, arc and ring calcifications, punctate calcification. And beside this may be flocculent calcification. So all these types of the calcification behaviors on the conventional radiograph. Beside this, uh, inchondroma protuberance has been already discussed. Olier disease and Mufusi disease has been discussed. So I do hope this would be a very useful video. Just watch time and again. Look for the images. Look for the x-rays and enhance your knowledge. If you have any question, just drop me a message and I will get back to you with some other new informative video. We'll see each other. Till then, take great care of yourself. Bye-bye.